Hi, my name is Dominic, and I would like to talk to you a little bit about the robot pattern. So, what it is and how it actually, what it is and how we use it here in Grand Parade. Uh, so, uh, the robot pattern was first introduced by Jake Ward, and at least this is the first time I've heard about it. This is uh, a take on the page object pattern. Uh, some of you may be familiar with page object pattern. <clears throat> and uh, to some of you, may, it may be a bit uh, new. Um, what it does, it is the basic idea is to decouple the test scenarios from UI. Um, in a regular scenario, when, when you are creating some test scenarios, when you are creating uh, UI tests uh, especially, uh, you can have, for example, now to start having to record some tests. For example, an Xcode, you can have uh, the test recorder, more similar tools for Android. Uh, basically, what you get is that you get a test, uh, a huge mess of code, uh, which um, relates to every specific object. So, imagine you have an application with an OK button, and you've created like a ton of tests for this OK button with every flow possible, something different happens. Around the application, <coughs> uh, as you do with the application, and um, for some reason the UI changes. So instead of the up OK button, you now have, for example, a down button, and so you end up with a hundred tests that are failing, and it's not your fault. It's fault because the UI changed. So what would, uh, what would you like to do is basically change this button and put it into some kind of variable, and. This is what usually happens when you use the patterns, for example, the page of the pattern, which is most co more commonly used for the web. Uh, and then if the, the UI changes, you just change this one, this one particular variable, which corresponds to the particular pattern. Um, so when you are using, when you decouple the UI from the test scenario and you write the test scenario separately from the UI, uh, you, can, you can write tests faster. It is easier to maintain because if something changes, you only change it in one place. It looks better and you can always see the test scenario in one file and in a separate file, in a separate place, a separate object, you have the UI that is corresponding to the particular elements you want to do. So, the robot pattern um, focuses on having every screen in an application to have a, it's, uh, a robot. The same as in the page of the pattern when you have every page is an object. And um, the robot is responsible for interacting with the screen and with the elements. So, for example, if you have the button, you no longer need to get the button, you, don't long, you no longer need to click it, you just know you have the robot and you can ask it to click for you. Um, the robots perform tasks, but they can find elements, and they can do all the stuff that you need to do. So all the code, all the implementation is hidden, and you can only focus on creating test scenarios. The robots are self-contained independent units. You don't need to instantiate them. You don't need to worry about coding, in the, coding them in. Uh, you just worry about the test scenarios. So, before we get to the app itself, I would like to show you. Uh, I, I would like to show you the app I have prepared for this demo. Um, just a. Just a word of explanation. I will be showing you the robot on Android, so the application will be on Android, but I will also tell you how we can use it, uh, the same technology you can use on iOS for iPhones. And um, what we will be using here is language Kotlin for Android, and underneath we'll be using Framework Espresso. This is not that much important for this, for this demonstration, but it is important for how we are testing this now when we're using it. So, let's just start with, our, with the application. You might get my mouse to move to the left side of the screen. It's okay. Okay, <laughs> 
of the policy application. It's on the left hand side of the screen. So it's, it's a very uh, simple application. The only thing you have here is an empty screen. The empty screen is actually a list. This is a list of elements that will be added. The only thing that you can interact here is the plus sign. So let's see. Uh, as I said, every element, uh, every screen, and every element on the screen should have um, a robot for itself. So let's just go back a little bit. This is the list screen. So probably the list screen will have a robot for itself. And when we add elements, this is the form. This is a dialog box. And the form will have uh, a robot for itself. So let's just here see how it works. You can type in whatever you want. You can just type elements. Click OK. And this is the elements. Now the list has an element on it. And this element can also have a robot. For every item on the list, it's good to have a robot. For example, if we, uh, if we have these elements, it opens another screen. A screen will now find a robot. So this is also a screen. And this is something that we actually want to test. This is something we want to see how it works. Uh, we want to verify the name that we've typed in. So in this case, this is elements seen on the top here. and um, that's pretty much it. It's a simple application. And if we open the application again, the list is not saved. So this is uh, for the sanity, not to have any flaky tests, just for this presentation. So, remember, every screen, for every screen we want to create a robot. For every robot we want to see what elements we can have on the screen. We want to describe those elements that we can uh, interact with. And that's the basic rule. I will not show you on this demonstration how to code in a robot because we're on a tight schedule, but I will show you how to create a first scenario for it already existing uh, existing robots, existing UI accessors. So if we go back, this screen has a dedicated robot. This robot interacts with the screen. You can tell the robot to press the plus sign, or you can which opens the other robot form. The other robot form actually is a separate robot. It can type in some text and can click on the console or OK. For this presentation, we're only focusing on happy graph, so we won't be needing the console button. We'll just click OK. And when we create the robot, we can use Espresso underneath our implementation to find an item by a name. So the name here in green is actually a string that we can pass to the scenario. We can pass it to the robot to tell it to look for the particular a uh, particular thing that we are looking for, the particular element. And we'll treat each item as a separate robot because uh, this is more to show you how the view and fragments work on Android. And when we finally have the robot details screen, we can check for two things. We can check the, on top if the name is, uh, is a string that we want to see. And we can see if the description of the image is what we actually want. This is the same as the name. So, the test. Let's see how it works. So, first of all, we want to uh, type in, in any language you want. It's plain English, what the test scenario should be. In this case, it is very important to separate every step to the screen because, as I mentioned, every screen has a robot. So, every view has a robot. We want to know on which screen we are doing each operation. In this case, we would like to see if the list screen is empty, just to make sure that it actually res resets every, every time we launch the application. We want to press the Add button, and those are two things that we can do on the list screen. And then with the robot form is open. So we want to type in some text. In this case, we'll be typing just the elements, just to see if it works. Then on the form, we want to press OK, so the element will be added. Then we are back to the list screen. And on this list screen, we want to see if the robot entry is present, and we want to press the element to see the details. When we see the details, we want to see if the element the string is present as we type it in. So, and we have this. This is a little cheat sheet. This is something you can have when you're calling in. And I would like to tell you one more thing here. Uh, Creating robots and separating UI from the test scenarios is great if you are new to the project, for example. Uh, it allows for collaboration between developers and QAs. Imagine that you are starting your work at Grand Parade tomorrow, 
and you have no idea about the coffee language, you have no idea how to test Android, but you know how, what the scenario is. Because you just click on the application, you have it on your phone, you know what you want to do, but you don't know how to code it in. And this is, uh, this is not a problem, you can ask the developer for help, the developer can code in the robots, so UI accessors, you don't worry about Espresso, you don't even worry about coffee because the language is very simple. And this is where we start to code. So let's try this code something in. So what we want to do is we want to start on the robots list. So we call in robots list. You can see what actions we already have. You want to see if no is empty. This is a verification, just assertion of what we want to see. Next, we want to add an element. Sorry. We want to add an element, so we want to press the add button. This, are, as I said, has already been coded in by the developers. So if this is your first day, you can do the same thing I'm doing right now. Uh, we'll be opening the form right now. So, oh, actually, let's see if it works. We can use a debugger and uh, set a breakpoint and see if it actually close to the place we want, to, we want this to be. Uh, let's change the Android Studio for the testing configuration and let's launch it as a debugger. Okay. So, does it work? Something's happening. I can see the, the line here. It's working. The gray is working. You can see. Okay. Something's happening. Okay. Okay, so the application started, and we're actually on. Oh, yeah, we want the. I put the paper to early. <laughs> okay. But as you can see, the application launches, and I can uh, show you how the test passes. Let's go. Okay. We saw the form opening, so it seems like it's working. Let's do all the rest of the things that we need to do. So, do you remember what the test was? I don't. I need to recheck it. Okay, robot form, type element into the text field, press OK button. Okay, we can do this. So, robot. Actually, this, this, this is not details, this is robot form. Okay, we want to type. We want to type element. Why not? And we want to press OK button. We are back on the list screen. And on the list screen, we want to see if we have an item, has an item. There we go. Element. And here you can see a nice little, little neat trick that we have with Kotlin language and functional programming. We can actually access the item. And when we access the element, it actually returns the item. So we can press it. And now the last thing we want to do is we want to see if we actually have the title that we've typed in in the first place. And just to show you that it works, I will just put this here. Put our ready. So let's see if it works. This is the basic test. I will show you the full code in a second. I'll just launch it. Okay. Can you see the Do you want to see it bigger, maybe? Okay, we're tapping it. We're here. As you can see, it works. The test passed, and you can see in one of those little tiny boxes, the old test had passed. Okay. So back to presentation. This is the system we have, and this is what we've done. We have created a test scenario in plain English, just remembering that every step has to correspond to a particular screen, and we have coded in a little sample of uh, the code that refers to this screen. This is a very simple thing that you can do, and what's more important is that we are writing this in Kotlin. Kotlin is a functional language, 
is um, pretty easy to code in. And what's even more important is that it looks almost exactly like Swift. And this is something that we're actually using here. I can show you. This is a production code we have, just a little sample. On the left, you can see the Android code. On the right, you can see the iOS code. As you can see, the steps, except, well, they are in different color, yeah, but the steps and the functions are identical. The only thing you can see different is the little C in the function name on the top, and the annotation test in Android. So we are not using any cucumber, we are not using any um, business-driven development. This is our business-driven development. We run the test once, and you can just paste, uh, copy and paste it into another platform. It's very important because if you land in mobile development, if uh, you land a job in QA engineering in mobile, you don't want to create tests and maintain two separate code bases. This is, well, maybe there are different code bases, but they are the same test scenarios. So this is very cool because if you start to do a job tomorrow in mobile development, in test automation, you can just create the test scenario once and then copy paste it between the two platforms. And with the implementation was underneath those, uh, how the robots are coded, how the UI accessories are coded, you don't really need to care about this. If you really want to, if you really need to switch to a or Android, you can do this. But you can also just take care of the test scenarios and let developers code those uh, UI accessories themselves. So, that's pretty much it. I wanted to show you. Are there any questions? Okay. Can you, can you show the implementation of uh, robot as an example? Yeah, this is actually in Kotlin. And to be absolutely honest, I'm not very good at Kotlin. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm just focusing on the scenarios. So, for example, we have the. Uh, let me just close this. Okay. Uh, so let's see for example the robust list. This is what we have. Give me a second. Okay. So this is actually Kotlin, and uh, to be honest, there are developers sitting here who can explain more about how this implementation works. And uh, the basic idea is that uh, this is uh, this is a single tone, so we don't have to instance it every time. Um, this is something that uh, uses Espresso. Uh, we have the um, access for ID, I think it's right here. This is the main activity we have. And uh, we have the functions that we are actually using. For example, this is empty. We are checking here on child, almost this, this is the line. We want to see it. So we here. So we have the matcher here that matches the is recycle and this is a certain function that is something that's inside Espresso. And this is the message that when something goes wrong, when the matcher does not find so it doesn't return true. So this is basically an answer that you could use in, for example, Java. Do you have uh, something specific in mind that you'd like to see? No, 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 no. Okay. no, it's the first time I, I see a copy, so I'm yeah, just curious. It's, it's very nice. There's also ketchup in a copy, so <laughs> you can look it up. <laughs> <laughs>